Hello and a very good evening. It is yet another wonderful week. This is Just The Facts Show. My name is Jojo Kachi and of course tonight we're doing it different. We're turning down not anything to do with politics, but of course something that may empower you. And of course we're talking about the new revolution in the market and that is in way of uh, changing things as they used to be in the taxi sector. And with me today, I know your guest could be as good as mine. We're having the Uber... Uh, General Manager for East Africa. Yes. Anderson. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, just to let him introduce yourself to the, to the viewers probably. Perfect. And maybe your full names and the title. Perfect. Uh, yeah, my name is Nate Anderson. I'm the General Manager for Uber in East Africa. Mm -hmm. And super happy to be here. Thanks for having me, George. Welcome to the show. Yeah. Right. Did you ride or uh, did you ride on a Uber coming to the show? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> a everywhere I go, I've, I Uber. I actually haven't owned a car in six years. So, okay. Um, yeah, I Uber in every country I'm in. Yeah. So there is a <laughs> number of you know misconceptions about Uber, and yeah. and uh, in your introduction, I didn't hear you mention something of Uber Taxi General Manager East Africa. <laughs> is Uber a taxi? No. So I mean, service probably. Yeah. I mean, th th there's always different misperceptions in the market, but um, I think. What we need to make super clear here is that Uber is a technology company. Um, a lot of people don't know this, that Uber actually doesn't own any cars or employ any drivers. Mm -hmm. um, it purely provides this technology platform that matches people that want to get a ride mm -hmm. with someone who's willing to give it. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's really how that idea started back in 2009. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so w w how come we, we, we've had the disparity between uh, people who term these are taxis for Uber, these are mm -hmm. the normal taxis and what have you? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think when it, when it comes to like, what is Uber and what, what does Uber bring to the market, we, we should really go back to how did Uber first start, mm -hmm. right? And, and it happened when our co-founders were in Paris. Mm -hmm. um, ba back in 2009, they had difficulty trying to get a cab, mm -hmm. right, or, or get a taxi. And that was a time when smartphones really started to pick up and they said, how awesome would this be if we could just push a button mm -hmm. and get a ride? Mm -hmm. And that was this whole idea of Uber. And so they went back to San Francisco mm -hmm. um, and, and started building this technology. Mm -hmm. and, and essentially what happened is they would find existing operators in the market, existing taxis, existing private hire drivers, mm -hmm. right? And say like, use this, use this technology to get more business mm -hmm. um, throughout the week. And, and that's how, how it started. And it started in one city, then it started moving to more cities, more states, more countries. Um, and now six, seven years later, we're in you know, over 70 countries and 400 cities. Yeah, and it's really working, revolutionized, mm -hmm. uh, revolutionizing the market. But we've been seeing it greeted with apprehensions in different places that you're going. Why, why is it so? Yeah. Or is it uh, <laughs> just uh, being uh, conservative? No, I mean, like, I think Uber is something that just really, like, took the world by storm. And, like, it was something where there was just so much pent-up demand for riders to get around their cities more affordably. Mm -hmm. I think what we found is that in every city we've gone to, every country, like, we get, have this resounding feedback that, you know what, I've never been able to explore my city so, like, so much before and, and so affordably. Right, and, and so we definitely have riders that love it on the driver's side mm -hmm. too. It, it allows them to explore. And many drivers that may have been existing taxi before be they came to Uber, maybe they were existing private hire, maybe a, a totally different job entirely. Mm -hmm. um, they love this idea that they can drive people around and see so many parts of the city they never would have seen before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and to the riders, we can't really overemphasize the benefits that uh, Uber has come with. Mm -hmm. and, and, and of course, uh, we saw the apprehension that happened uh, when you were trying to launch it in uh, Nairobi, mm -hmm. uh, that is in Kenya. Uh, did you, uh, were you there in, in, in the fo formative uh, stages? Yeah, so um, uh, I've worked with Uber since, since 2014, yes. been a part but of But in Kenya, I'm just, uh, yeah, my question is based yeah. in Kenya, Nairobi. Yeah, so, so I, I joined the market in, in January of 2016 mm -hmm. here. And, and so yeah, there, there was definitely some times of, of intimidation or apprehensive mm -hmm. apprehension earlier in the year. And like, don't get me wrong, that was an extremely tough time for, mm -hmm. for the team, a tough time for the driver partners. Um, Do you think like giving up? Did you think like giving up? No, I, no, absolutely <laughs> not. Um, no, I mean, I, like Travis, our CEO, he always talks about like, we need to make sure we're always doing good work. And if we believe we're good people doing good work, like mm -hmm. we need to persevere. And I think what happened during that time is that it really opened up a dialogue. And you talked before about there's all these misperceptions in the market, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And I think one of the biggest ones that we found out back in February, March of this year is that people didn't know that they could actually use the, the platform, mm -hmm. right? And, and so people before were maybe not as happy about it because they didn't know they could actually use the same technology to increase their business and increase their chances for profit. Mm -hmm. and, and so now actually over 50% 
uh, of drivers in Nairobi are, are former taxi operators. All right. So did you yeah. accommodate them? You know, there was uh, like, you know, uh, separation of, you know, people calling them the taxi operators <laughs> of Kenya. And you see the other Uber uh, taxi drivers probably. Mm -hmm. Did you, how did you bring the convergence? How did you manage to do that? Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, it, it opened up that discussion. And, and what are we trying to do? And I think everyone here is trying to help you know, local Kenyans and people visiting move around the city and move around the city reliably, affordably, and, and with good transparency. And so once there became a better understanding of that and how can someone utilize the Uber technology platform on, on the side or, or full time, right, and see that it had that flexibility. So if someone wants to drive and use Uber as the technology full time, they can. Right, if they want to use it part time and then turn it off and then have their own private clients, they can do that as well. Mm -hmm. And so once people realize that, I think we just saw more acceptance in the market and, and more people come on and drive. Yeah, and that we're talking about convenience and of course affordability, mm -hmm. and especially to the riders. Uh, so how would you term you know the months that you've been in Nairobi? How has mm -hmm. the success story been? No, I mean we, we've been so humbled um, mm -hmm. by the growth in Nairobi, and I think that it plays into a few parts. First mm -hmm. of all, Nairobi is a massive tech scene. Right, and, and, and I've lived in a lot of different parts of the world, and what I would truly say is like, I buy into the Silicon Savannah narrative mm. here, and it was mm. one of those things where, as Uber and as a, like a, a tech company that wants to really help celebrate cities, it made so, so much sense for us to come here, and we saw such amazing growth in the beginning. We always kind of joke that we, we think we waited too long. We mm. wish we would have launched <laughs> Nairobi much earlier. <laughs> much earlier, really. <laughs> um, but, but no, and it, it's been amazing. It's been amazing to be a part of the tech community here. Mm. Um, been amazing to, to grow in. And I think there's just so many exciting things to come in the future. And so we're really excited for that. We just started a lot of our East African expansion. Mm -hmm. um, it started with Mombasa in March, uh, then Kampala and Dar later this year in June. Um, and, and I think there, there's a lot of more exciting stuff on the way. Yeah, uh, and also something else you're seeing uh, Uber do to the country, of course, in, uh, it's uh, in way of creating employment by the number of drivers mm -hmm. we're seeing, you know, uh, enrolling to be part of these uh, all uh, services. Yeah. So, so, so how would you term, you know, the uptake and, of course, uh, curing the unemployment scourge in the country? Yeah, I mean, so providing economic opportunities yes. is, is so core to Uber, right? And, and one of the things that we're excited to always talk about since coming to Kenya in mm -hmm. January of 2015 is that We've enabled over a thousand economic opportunities where over a thousand drivers are using the platform every single week is a way to earn a living. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so that's really exciting. It's a number that we want to grow. Um, I think there's a, another part of the story that's, that's interesting is how can Uber not only provide a great economic opportunity for someone, but then help encourage entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. right? And so there's different types of drivers that would utilize the platform. You have some that are drivers that work underneath a fleet partner or vehicle owner right, it is a salary, and then you have independent operators, people that just partner with Uber directly and drive their own vehicle. And some of my favorite stories are some that come in working underneath a fleet partner or some other vehicle owner mm -hmm. are able to save enough through mm -hmm. working on the platform to How get their own vehicle. How many of such stories have you had before? <laughs> a strong handful, uh -huh. um, no, absolutely. Um, but a, a lot of people then will, will get their own vehicle and then mm. actually save enough there to start financing whether it's five, ten, sometimes even twenty vehicles mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, to, to employ Massive other drivers. Massive that is, yeah. And, and you create the cycle where someone, you know, originally was a driver employed under someone else and now has their own fleet business of, of ten cars. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it's a really life-changing thing and it's a, an amazing thing to enable. Um, and that was part of the reason too why earlier this year we did a really amazing vehicle um, service deal or vehicle financing platform with City and Bank mm -hmm. that helped utilize current Uber data as a way to craft a, a credit score, mm -hmm, per mm -hmm. se, for, for the drivers then who are underneath someone else to mm -hmm. get uh, their own vehicle. And how many have benefited so far under, under the same program? Yep, so no, um, we definitely have massive aspirations on it. You know, um, we're, we're getting close to the first hundred loans approved, mm -hmm. um, but, but there's definitely the cars are on the road and, and people are really, really excited to, about the program. Yeah, and, and uh, is the space uh, <laughs> still available <laughs> for other drivers? I know some <laughs> may be watching right now yeah. and they're wondering, are they too late to you know, uh, be accommodated into the platform? Yeah, no, they're definitely not too late. Um, yeah. I think we're still in the very, very early stages. I'm mm -hmm. um, in Nairobi and, and the demand is so high right now. We're definitely taking on more drivers, more fleet partners. Um, there is no wait list. Um, we definitely, there's a lot of people that are trying to move around the city and you know, the more drivers that we can help help enable those riders to move um, the better. So there's a lot of demand. Yeah, that, that the idea is so noble is uh, <laughs> not arguable, uh, yeah. Net. But 
we find in Kenya that uh, such noble ideas come mm -hmm. and, you know, the euphoria of people getting into it and, you know, it defeats the rule of supply and demand whereby mm -hmm. we have now a lot of supply than what we demanding. Have you people yeah. done more of a, 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 an analysis in the market to, you know, gauge how you can make this sustainable? No, absolutely. I mean, you always need to balance supply and demand and, and make sure that, you know, drivers that come on and, and trust that platform, mm -hmm. right, ha have enough trips to, to make it work. And, and it's so core to the heart of everything that we do mm -hmm. um, that, that we definitely <coughs> are always ensuring that. But I think what's been so exciting for us is that because this technology enables people to take rides that may have never taken a ride before, you find that there's actually just so much more demand than, than that was in the market previously. Um, I think one of the big things are now is that people are finding it more convenient to Uber to and from work every day mm -hmm. um, rather than drive their own vehicle. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that's really core to Uber's belief right now. And like when we go to celebrate cities, what are some some of those big impacts we can have on the city and it's let's try to find a way to reduce the need for parking spots. Mm -hmm. um, like own, owning a car is a, a very interesting thing because it's one of the most underutilized assets you have. 95% um, of the time it sits there idle. Mm -hmm. So you drive to work and it sits there and the, all day and then like you, you, you drive back home. <laughs> that's why you don't own a car. <laughs> <laughs> that's, why, that's why I don't own a car. But, but, but think about it, in, in places like the CBD and Westland, it's so tough to find parking. Yeah, yeah it's sure. It's like super expensive. Yeah. And if you can Uber to and from work every day, you re mm. reduce the need to use so much of the key city spaces mm -hmm. towards parking lots. Mm -hmm. and, and so we have this phrase like, let's have more parks instead of parking lots <laughs> <laughs> in, in, in cities. Um, and, and I think if we can find a way to make it affordable enough for, for riders mm -hmm. and, and convenient and reliable enough that you'll always get to, to and from work every day, mm -hmm. it's a no brainer. And, and so, like I, I told you before, I don't own a car, Uber, yeah. tune from work every day. <laughs> um, but, but I think like the interesting thing in, in my own personal situation is that like it is cheaper for me to Uber tune from work every day than pay the parking in my building. Mm -hmm. and, and and we've had uh, some uh, you know uh, people uh, cite uh, you know Uber being erratic in terms of their price setting. Mm. What causes this? Uh, so I think what you're probably talking about is is dynamic pricing yeah, the or surge dynamic, pricing yeah, 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 sure. that, that, that people talk about. And, and it all goes to this mission statement of being as reliable as running water, mm -hmm. right? And like at the end of the day, we're gonna know there, there's times where there's just a lot of demand. And on a weekly basis, it might be during the rush hours or the weekend nights, or there could be a big holiday like New Year's, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. That you just know that there's gonna be a lot of people requesting rides. Mm -hmm. But our goal is to always have a car to you in five minutes or less. Mm -hmm. And so the reason why we have dynamic pricing is to help regulate um, the market there and ensure that you can get a car. Because if you have to get to the airport, you can't miss that flight. Mm -hmm. So we need to get your car within five minutes. And then also too, when prices start to rise during these high demand periods, mm -hmm. it encourages more drivers to sign onto the platform, mm -hmm. right? And then more drivers sign onto the platform and, and there's heat maps of showing where the highest demand pockets are in the app. It, it, it helps to ensure that you have that perfect e economy uh, mm -hmm. of supply and demand. Mm -hmm. um, so, so that's why it is. I know it's, I know it's controversial, but but it, at the end of the day, it's always going to be about reliability. Mm -hmm. and, um, and rides during low demand periods should be cheaper than rides during the highest demand. Yeah, and, and net, I know in other yeah. countries whereby probably you've had your success stories, yeah. it has not come without a, a number of complexities mm -hmm. in, in terms of, of course, the apprehension bit of it yeah. that we've already uh, tackled. Uh, but a look at Kenya, the Kenyan market, do yeah. you find it receptive? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think Kenya is a place that welcomes entrepreneurship and welcomes innovation. I think that's why we find so many people love creating companies here. And like, there's such a buy-in to help the tech scene in Kenya and in Nairobi and, and really build out that hub. Um, and, and so like I said before, we're just, we're happy to be a part of it. Um, we think Uber's been, been welcomed uh, with, with open arms so far in, in terms of uh, just even how the riders and drivers have, have really picked onto the platform. Yeah, and you know, yeah. in Kenya, uh, people like uh, Rastas <laughs> and Dakina Shadi yeah. would tell you that indeed people like uh, things that they can enjoy for po posterity. Mm -hmm. uh, are we seeing Uber only get the hype, you know, for a matter of few years and then it gets the, to, to the news dive? <laughs> or, or what are the future <laughs> prospects for? <laughs> you you got to remember, our, our <laughs> Uber is only like six or seven years old, so it's still a very new com um, company in, in that regard. But I think like 
celebrating the city, and I, and I mentioned it a few times, it's, it's, one, of our, it's one of our cultural values. In mm -hmm. fact, it's the first one. And I think like, it's just so keen to everything we do and everywhere we go and every city we launch, hiring local teams, trying to figure out what are the different dynamics in Kenya versus South Africa versus Nigeria versus Egypt, all around the world, and, and say, how can we best localize this product to the market? And, and what can we do to make sure that you know, Uber is a part of, of the community here. And so it, it goes even to the events that we partner with, whether we've done Kuroga Festival, Festival Safari Sevens, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. other things there, but even the, the different types of products or like special pop-ups that we'll try. And, mm -hmm. and so one we did recently was Uber Chopper, mm -hmm. um, where people could request a chopper on demand in the app. Um, which was, was a fun one for the team to execute on. Mm -hmm. uh, and, 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 and perhaps you've heard that, of course, you yeah. have some in incentives for, 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 for the, uh, the riders mm -hmm. in terms of the free Uber rides. <laughs> uh, so how does this happen? Because uh, you yeah. see, it's, these are so simple questions, but there are people who don't know them. Yeah, no, for sure. And for, and for anyone listening that haven't, hasn't used Uber, um, there is a first ride free. And so that's, I think that's one of the benefits that we try. You, okay. <laughs> yeah, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 and the philosophy behind it is because we believe so much in the experience and the product that's here that if someone hasn't tried it, if they can try out Uber for that first time, mm -hmm. we hope that that experience is so magical mm -hmm. that they, they come back and try it again. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so that's, that's the philosophy behind it. So it's part of, part of the marketing initiatives with Uber to, to offer that first ride free. Yeah, now let me talk about the car owners and, yeah. and we, we have a rapidly growing uh, middle class mm -hmm. uh, whom are, you know, having the rush of, you know, owning vehicles, but of course uh, through <laughs> uh, 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 serviced loans and, yeah. and what have you. Are they, you know, accepted to bring in their vehicles which are uh, being serviced? Yeah, so I mean, th that's what it comes down to. There's two types of, of people that really partner, right? You have vehicle owners that yeah. have a vehicle that, that sits idle, right? Because 95% of the time it does. And, yeah. and they're saying, wow, I'd rather put this vehicle to use, hire, hire a person or hire two people to drive this. I can mm -hmm. employ, you know, basically employ Kenyans to drive the vehicle. They earn money. The vehicle owner earns a bit of money. And, like, and that's definitely part of the model. And, and so those are technically called our fleet partners mm -hmm. um, in Nairobi. And then we have others that want to drive their own car. Mm -hmm. um, so, so it is open for both of them. Yeah. Now, yeah. for for those who you know, of course, own their vehicles and they yeah. would wish to uh, come on the platform, <laughs> uh, and perhaps these vehicles are being uh, they, they've taken a loan to buy the vehicle. Are they mm -hmm. uh, allowed to, uh, to 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 the to the platform? If, if if someone took a loan to get a vehicle, yes. Yeah, as long as it meets the vehicle requirements, and obviously there's um, a, a lot of the different standards that we have in terms of ensuring compliance. Mm -hmm. um, but if as long as it's the min the minimum year and, and all the compliance lines up. And, um, and, and what are your requi requirements? I know that is a, a <laughs> question that <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> many people could be having. What are the requirements you're talking yeah, about? Yeah, so, so it's different in every city, but for Nairobi specifically, it's 2008 and above. Uh -huh. And then also um, it's four-door sedans, so, so no hatchbacks, because you know, people like bigger cars to, uh -huh. to ride in, depending on how many passengers. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so that's the standard vehicle requirements in terms of, and then obviously a lot of aesthetic things in there. You want to make sure there's working air conditioning, radio works, seat belts are good, and ensuring all those safety standards mm -hmm. that are met. And then in terms of uh, just even the, the government compliance, like ensuring that you have the right insurance, the right NTSA stickers, mm -hmm. um, and, and then any driver that has it has the correct licensing as well. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and in terms of, you know, training the drivers who are operating mm -hmm. uh, taxis under uh, Uber application, yeah. uh, do you have a say in that or? Yeah, so we, we have basically a marketing and support center here, mm -hmm. right? And, and what that does is it's, it's called our green light hub. And, and so we have hundreds of drivers and, and partners that go through it every week. And people may go there for new driver training. Mm -hmm. How do you use the application? How do you provide five star service, right? Mm -hmm. You got to remember every single ride is rated mm -hmm. between one and five stars. And mm -hmm. that's one of the, the really nice features that ensures accountability on the system. Mm -hmm. Right, and so the green light hub, part of it's dedicated towards that. Mm -hmm. Right, if people start to get lower ratings, right, while they're driving on the platform, we invite them back in to do mm -hmm. a retraining to make sure again, like we always want to ha have a high quality service, but there is training um, that is provided there, and it's also a support center for any general inquiries. Mm. Yeah. Uh, just to, uh, my director is interrupting <laughs> me and he's uh, okay. telling me that of course uh, he's uh, tried using Uber before. Okay, but he's never. Uh, it's a great experience. Uh, <laughs> Have you had a great experience? <laughs> He's waiting for his free ride. <laughs> uh, I'll give him the code right after this. You'll be giving a car, so relax, my friend. <laughs> um, yeah. 
yeah yeah but, but, but anyway like mm -hmm. uh, we 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 we're looking at at you know the the application itself and and it uh, yeah. coming to the country mm -hmm. uh, and, and of course uh, interrogating the the the, the uh, you know sustainability mm -hmm. of these yeah. of these services itself yeah. uh, and that is why we want to be labor on uh, is it something that you can guarantee us that will be so sustainable I mean, it, it's something, like I said, back to our, our first cultural value, yeah. right? If, if we believe we're, we're good people doing good things and our cultural values are, you know, to celebrate the city and find better ways to ingrain Uber into Nairobi, mm -hmm. um, Uber into Mombasa as well, like, it, it naturally is going to come, right? And, and so I think we just need to always make sure day by day we're, we're doing the right thing and, you know, everyone feels good about what's going on and, and right now we do. Mm -hmm. Right, and, and so I think that's the most important thing, and so and that's why our, we have riders and drivers too to help hold us accountable, right? Mm -hmm. and, and so that feedback that we get, or making sure that we're always finding more ways to add value to the ecosystem. Um, but I think the the goal is to provide so much, right? Like we're, we've only just touched like on, on a very small thing. All we have is UberX, mm -hmm. right, in the market, and you look at other cities, right? Like there's all different types of products, whether it's larger cars, mm -hmm. um, there's an Uber black vehicle view. Um, in other markets, we have motorcycles or, or smaller vehicles, mm -hmm. right? That you can get around. And what we're always trying to figure out is where geographically does it make sense for us to be in Kenya? Or like what other cities potentially should we be, right? And then what products can we do to best serve, right? And, and so maybe it's Right now, just UberX. Maybe in the future, it's one of these other ones. Maybe it's a full-time view of Uber Chopper, mm -hmm. right? Or, <laughs> <laughs> but, or, or maybe a food delivery as well. And yeah, we, we actually do. just yeah, launched. Sure, sure. <laughs> uh, we, we just launched Uber Eats um, in Johannesburg. So, uh -huh. so Uber Eats just came to the continent, and uh -huh. it's um, it, it's a food delivery service. But um, these are always the things that we're doing, and and, and the team is dedicated um, very much to finding the best ways to serve the city. And, and speak uh, specifically speaking to the Kenyan market, and, yeah. and of course we know. With such a uh, such a such a you know uh, such a business, yeah. innovativeness will uh, really thrive it further, and, and of course people yeah. would be waiting for you people to you know bring up uh, more innovative products to make it even yeah. more better. <laughs> so what what do you have in store for the Kenyan market? Yeah, I mean I, I think it's it's fun because we're always trying things, right? And I think earlier this year we were delivering ice cream, and then uh, last <laughs> month we were delivering uh, uh -huh. helicopters. Uh -huh. um, I think the other nice thing, and again it, it touches on the innovativeness of of Nairobi and of Kenya is that mm -hmm. we're always looking as this is one of the markets to test new products mm -hmm. and, and something that people don't know is that Uber didn't always accept cash mm -hmm. right when, when Uber first started the the idea of the magical experience was to not have cash right and, and that was the genesis of one, or one of the key features of, of the product in the beginning obviously as we expanded mm -hmm. to more countries across mm -hmm. the world mm -hmm. we found out like hey we need to <laughs> rethink mm -hmm. uh, about how we go about the product and so when one of the projects I got to lead was how do we roll out cash around the world mm -hmm. um, and when we went to select our first cities Nairobi was one of the first two cities that we, de we decided on mm -hmm. and I think it just goes to this openness of trying new tech and new innovation mm -hmm. and so I think there, there should be good comfort when we have another really really crazy idea Nairobi should be one of the first cities to be getting it. Oh, okay <laughs> and, and, and Net you will appreciate that of course uh, the yeah. you know taxi hailing uh, services mm -hmm. in the country is experiencing a massive growth and and yep. we're having a number of applications also uh, coming coming, yeah. coming into play. Uh, do you think uh, this will really change how things are operating in, in the country? And, and yeah. perhaps how do you view <laughs> the, the other yeah. uh, no, for competitive sure. um, uh, technologies? And again, it, it goes back to, to Nairobi being a tech hub. But you're right, there's a lot of applications. I think there's like seven or eight of them now. Mm -hmm. and, and it talks about a, a few different points. First of all, it's like once you can create these efficiencies and these innovations, you find out the pie is actually much bigger because people are willing to take mm -hmm. take rides that they might not normally otherwise would have done. Mm -hmm. But when it all comes down to it, it's this ecosystem, right? You have riders and you have drivers. Mm -hmm. and at the end of the day, like you want to make sure there's choice for riders and great opportunities for drivers, and like, that's mm -hmm. at the heart of what Uber does. Mm -hmm. And so like we don't spend time focusing on any specific competitor, mm -hmm. but always figuring out like how can we provide the most value to the riders and drivers? Mm -hmm. And when you have a bunch of different companies all fighting to step up their game, like I think you get people working harder and it just makes that general ecosystem a lot better. And we're gonna see a lot more innovations come to the market and it's just gonna be better for, for all parties involved. Yeah, and, and not to be seen as probably a messiah, <laughs> so to speak. <laughs> <laughs> the other question that I can't let you go without answering. Yeah. What are you gaining from, from all this? 
what, what are we gaining? Yeah. Um, I mean, at the end of the day, Uber is like this technology platform, right? And, and so it, it is selling this lead generation service um, to drivers. So, so that Uber definitely does have, have skin in the game, right? But like at the end of the day, we're, we're always trying to find more technologies to bring, right? And so we're investing super heavily right now. Um, in the market and trying to figure out what's the best way to grow. At the end of the day, we've been here for you know 18 to 24 months so far, mm -hmm. um, and, and so the future's still very, very much ahead here. But you know, we're just excited to be a part of it. Yeah, and of course, uh, yeah. you know, this is where we want to decipher the the facts. Uh, and, <laughs> and of course, uh, during the yeah. apprehension that we witnessed in in, in Nairobi uh, yeah. specifically, we had people, you know, uh, brandish you know terms like "you coming to steal Kenyans' mm -hmm. monies" and what have you. Mm -hmm. So probably in terms of the benefit. Uh, yeah. In a layman's, uh, you know, understanding. <laughs> Got it. So, so, so the way that Uber works is yeah, that there's yeah. a service fee charge on every ride. Yes. So there's no fee to join Uber, right? Like it, it's absolutely free. It's a free technology to join, but then Uber charges for the value that it gives, right, to a driver. And, and so what it means is that there's a service fee of 20 to 25 percent on a, on a given trip. Right? And so then if you're a driver that decides to partner with Uber and you want to use Uber mm -hmm. as a lead generation mm -hmm. software to give you rides, mm -hmm. that 25% um, that would, would go to Uber. The lion share stays with the driver, stays, um, stays here. And then if you can provide enough trips, mm -hmm. that net is actually much more than what someone was earning before. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, you know, it's, 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 it's good that you're bringing up the, the point that you don't need any cash to you know, join Uber. And, and yeah. I'll tell you, I, I, in the country we've witnessed before, we mm -hmm. have a number of, you know, <laughs> fraudsters, I would say, okay. uh, whom uh, <laughs> would tell people like Shadi, uh, <laughs> do you understand Kiswahili? Uh, uh, kidogo. <laughs> yeah, Kidogo. <laughs> <laughs> They'll tell someone like Shadi, uh, kitu kidogo ni kuorganize Uber. Uh, the meaning, uh, just give me something small and then I'll see how I can mm. organize for you. Like, have you experienced such, such cases before? No, I mean, like, we, we have a very strict policy um, to, to not go that route, right? Mm -hmm. And so, like, everything we do is, like, Uber values transparency so much. It's so core to the technology, so core to the platform, and so core to how the team operates. Mm -hmm. um, that, that, that's just not something that, that's tolerated anywhere in the world at Uber. Right, and I think like one of the best things about the software is that like, everything is on the map, mm -hmm. right? And that's one of the things that we say is that why riders love the, 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 the platform so much is that think about this now when you go to request a ride. Um, you request it and you see exactly where that car is. You mm -hmm. have the, mm -hmm. the driver's name, their phone number, their mm -hmm. license plate, their driver rating, yes. right? And if you want to call them, and they're like, where are you? Like the driver can't lie, mm -hmm. right? Like I can see exactly <laughs> on the map, like where you are. Uh, and like, uh, like what was the industry like beforehand? Like w when you came to Nairobi before, <laughs> uh, did anybody ever lie to you? <laughs> that I'm just here, I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but think about it, that, that was what the industry was before, right? We, we all had some taxi guys. Maybe we had one, maybe we had yeah. five, <laughs> right? And, and like, it's like, am I going out tonight? And it's like, you're like, I have five taxi guys to call. And no matter uh, what one you call, they'll be like, I'm five minutes out. Yeah. <laughs> and like an hour later, like, where are you, man? Uh, um, but, but like, and that's cool. And like, that's what Uber loves. And like, it's so transparent. Who gets the dispatches is always the closest person, yes. right? You can see when the person comes, when you go on the trip, you're always on the map, mm -hmm. right? You can share your trip, other people see it. And then afterwards, you have that five-star rating, mm -hmm. right? And so it's like, someone knows, like, the quality of service someone provides on, on the platform platform is known by everyone because mm -hmm. every time you get into the ride maybe it's like oh this person's a 4.8 rating mm -hmm. right like nothing um, like goes under the table and, and so like this transparency is just so core to, to Uber and I think it helps contribute a lot to Uber's growth and why people really like the platform and, and like the company. Yeah and you're talking about a number of people now of uh, having you know uh, appreciated the fact that this is the in thing yeah. and of course if we have to go through this route we'll be more profitable mm -hmm. even as much as you want to you know uh, operate uh, as we used to uh, before okay. but but my question would be what if uh, a driver a taxi driver who had their own clients mm -hmm. and and you've already provided a technology to help them you know enhance uh, that customer base yeah, yeah and then decides like you know once i've already gotten these customers from <laughs> uber i transform them and they become my customer and then uh, let uh, go the application of uber do you don't you think that would be a loss to your side I mean, I think that's why you're always trying to provide value on both sides, right? Mm -hmm. Because 
the, for the rider, right, they're giving up a lot to not use the application. Mm -hmm. The reason why people love the application is, again, you get that transparency. You mm -hmm. get the nearest driver. So you're going to get picked up in three minutes, right, or four minutes, mm -hmm. right? And if you go back to this idea of, you know, your taxi guys, you just don't know what that reliability is going to be. Mm -hmm. um, and then I think the other thing, too, is that because Uber is like an open technology platform, right, we have all different types of drivers that use the platform. Some people have their own private clients, right? And maybe they drive for 10 hours a week on Uber, private clients the rest of the time. Maybe mm -hmm. they drive for 40 hours a week on Uber mm -hmm. and, and no private clients. Mm -hmm. um, and, and maybe they drive on multiple platforms, mm -hmm. right? Multiple technology platforms. Um, but because we're always about choice, we want to win, win drivers and win riders through providing the best value. Mm -hmm. And so if there's a situation where someone's not getting enough value and they're trying to get clients on the other side, or if riders are like, don't want to use Uber because they think that they get better value from a driver individually, again, it may just makes us work that much harder. Like, mm -hmm. how can we provide more value on the platform and, mm -hmm. and how can we make the product stickier? And, and so, if anything, if that happens, it just makes us work that much harder to, to, to benefit everyone as a, in the whole. Yeah, uh, a troublesome director on the other side of the gallery uh, yeah. is called Jose. <laughs> 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 you know, he's, uh, you know, contemplating and, and, and grappling with the fact that, of course, he's not on a smartphone before. Yeah. So the question is, uh, mm. is it a reserve for people with smartphones alone and, 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 and perhaps <laughs> people like Erastas who is using Kabambe cannot <laughs> have the opportunity to, of course, yeah. enjoy the services? No, so, so, so it's, it's very interesting, right? Yeah. When, when Uber actually first launched back mm -hmm. in San Francisco, mm -hmm. we did texting as well like text for ride and what ended up happening mm -hmm. um, were a few things. One, smartphones became a lot more popular at mm -hmm, the time mm -hmm, um, in, in the US and so we just saw that feature wasn't used as much, right? And so just more product development went towards the actual developing the application. Mm -hmm. I think as we expanded throughout the, the world, we're always testing new ways for people to order Ubers. Mm -hmm. and, and so right now, the, the predominant method is definitely through, through smartphones, mm -hmm. right? Whether it's on iOS, Android, or, or Windows, mm -hmm. right? But then also there is, you are able to request via the web right um, at m.uber.com it's mm -hmm. a it's a mobile website mm -hmm. um, and, and we have some other fun stuff that uh, we might be testing out too that but that Nata, I, I think we're not uh, on the same page there <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> That is a smartphone. That is, oh, a, it is a, a very nice Android phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like uh, someone would wish at least to, you know, enjoy, have, yeah. uh, be part of this uh, new technology, and, and, and probably they don't own the uh, smartphones. Yeah. How are you uh, maybe planning to help them out? <laughs> Yeah, no, we, we, there's some interesting things. Uh, unfortunately, the, the products aren't completed quite yet, so I, I don't know if I can share too much. Okay. But, but, but what I will <laughs> tell you is that um, for riders that don't have smartphones, like we, we definitely are exploring some really unique, um, really great solutions for you. And so mm -hmm. that might be so good, people that do have smartphones decide mm -hmm. to use the other ones as well too. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think time will tell. All right. Yeah. Uh, my director <laughs> is on my neck, and of course, uh, Ned. Uh, when it comes to this topic, we can always talk until the yeah, yeah, <laughs> until in the morning. But <laughs> but at least uh, just to give you the opportunity uh, yeah. and and speak to uh, perhaps the the driver, the riders, and and of course the partners yeah. that you people are working with. What can you tell them? Just like as your closing remarks. Oh no, absolutely. I think for for, for the driver partners that 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 choose every day to partner with Uber. Uh, just first of all, a big thank you to that. And we all know that like, the drivers are the ones that make Uber great, not only in Nairobi, but in every city around the world. And, and without the drivers, right, the, it wouldn't be that five-star service. So first of all, thank you very much there. For the riders, I think my challenge for you is uh, try to see if you really need to own a car. Uh, I would like to see more people get, go the route that I went and, and get rid of it. And, you know, try to see if you can Uber to and from work every day, and then I think it'll just help our city reduce the need for parking spots. Great. Ned, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for coming. All right. And of course, at least uh, we've gotten uh, much of uh, the facts <laughs> that we didn't have about Uber. Right. And of course, uh, it is not a taxi Rastas anymore, so don't term it as an Uber taxi. <laughs> it is an application. And of course, Vio, we've been speaking to uh, Nathaniel, uh, the general manager for East Africa Uber, uh, services that is uh, an application that enables and enhances the taxi operations in the country and uh, from me god bless you let's do this again next week see you then <laughs>